Hello, beautiful day, everyone, and welcome to day 20. Day 20 of 40 days as we're journeying through the book of Psalms. You guys, like, I'm telling you, we're there. You know? Hmm. So good, so, so, so good. All right, day 20. All right, so listen. Let's get real. It's time to get real with each other. Really almost three weeks diving into all of the richness of his word, right? Oh goodness, it's been so good. You know, the kingdom of God it's at hand. It's at hand. And it's time that we stand up and we're bold and courageous in doing the will of God. We have to plug in, truly plug in to what God is doing. God's restoration and his, um, his presence, we need his presence. Revival begins when God's people turn towards God and God shines brightly, right? And his favor and his grace when he shines on us. That is when revival happens. The work that we're doing here, it is, you know, it's for his glory, for him, for God to truly be revealed. My word for this year was intentionality. And that's being intentional. We have to be diligent and intentional. It's time to, you know, get real with God. A lot of the exposure that's happening in this season, right? It's just... Um, God's providence and revelation being fulfilled. The systems of this world are being shaken. I'm not. So, it's not. It's not the earth. We're talking about the world. You know how the Lord says, you know, be do not be conformed to this world. That's like the ways of the world. He's not talking about earth. Don't be conformed to, you know, the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We as believers must be transformed. It's time the world, the worldliness, you know, things of this world cannot coexist and coincide with the church within us as believers. Our thinking has to be different. I, our very behavior must be different. We have to plug in to God like never before. Count the cost as his chosen. It's time to launch into the deep. Hey, day 20, we say halfway there, but not even. Time to, as we see here, as we're this picture move beyond the shallow. It's time to launch into, into the deep. Let's get started. Oh Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your word and your true glory. It's day 20. We are going to be reading Psalm 77 through 80. This first psalm is about when overwhelmed remember God's greatness when you're overwhelmed remember God's greatness all right this is the word of the Lord I cried out to God for help I cried out to God to hear me when I was in distress I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. 
I remember you, God. And I groaned. I meditated. And my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in his anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and right. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Mm, Psalm 78 about God's continued guidance in spite of unbelief. Oh, this is one of my favorite songs. It extends basically from Israel's enslavement in Egypt to the reign of David, right? Oh, it's so, so good. You know, remember those things of old. Mm. Things written for our learning, for us, so many practical like principles and promises and things that we can recall and pull from as well to learn and not have to go through to endure for generations and generations. Oh, so good. The hidden thing. Here's the word of the Lord. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we've heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children 
so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they, in turn, would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Mm. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wonders he had shown them. He did miracles in the sight of their ancestors in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand up like a wall. He guided them with a cloud by day and with light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them water as abundant as the seas. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers but they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly, but can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel. For they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and by his power made the south wind blow. He rained meat down on them like dust, birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp, all around their tents. They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. But before they turned from what they craved, even while the food was still in their mouths. God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. They remembered the God, that God was their rock, that God most high was their redeemer. But then they would flatter him with their mouth lying to him with their tongues their hearts were not loyal to him they were not faithful to his covenant hmm. it's like oh how quickly do we forget this is superficial okay i'll repent but not really just for him to save us through this how many can yeah relate 38 says 
yet he was merciful. He forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them. Time after time, he restrained his anger and did not stir up his full wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the wasteland. Again and again, they put God to the test. They vexed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day he redeemed them from the oppressor, the day he displayed his signs in Egypt his wonders in the region of Zoan. He turned their river into blood. They could not drink from their streams. He sent swarms of flies that devoured them and frogs that devastated them. He gave their crops to the grasshopper, their produce to the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore figs with sleep. He gave over their cattle to the hill, their livestock to bolts of lightning. He unleashed against them his hot anger, his wrath, indignation, and hostility, a band of destroying angels. He prepared a path for his anger. He did not spare them from death, but gave them over to the plague. He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt, the first fruits of manhood in the tent of Ham. But he brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep through the wilderness. He guided them safely so they were unafraid. But the sea engulfed their enemies. And so we, so he brought them to the border of his holy land, to the hill country his right hand had taken. He drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel in their homes. Hmm. But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep his statues. Like their ancestors, they were disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bow. They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, he was furious. He rejected Israel completely. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had set up among humans. He sent the ark of his might into captivity, his splendor into the hands of the enemy. He gave his people over to the sword. He was furious with his inheritance. Fire consumed their young men and their young women had no wedding songs. Their priests were put to the sword and their widows could not weep. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep as a warrior wakes from the stupor of wine. He beat back his enemies. He put them to everlasting shame. Then he rejected the tents of Joseph He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth that he established forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep pens, from tending the sheep. He brought him to be the shepherd of his people 
Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands. He led them. Mm. Psalm 79, avenge the defilement of Jerusalem. O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They've left the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. They have poured out blood like water on all Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. We are objects of contempt to our neighbors, of scorn and diversion to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly. Meet us, for we are in desperate need. Hmm. So here they're acknowledging like the sins of our ancestors, but hold on, let's not just blame it on that. You know, those generational curses, no, 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 no. We need your mercy because of our sins as well. That should be our, our also stance and our posture beforehand. It's like, no, let's, let's keep it real, right? Help us, God, our savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your servants. May the groans of the prisoners come before you. With your strong arm, preserve those condemned to die. Pay back into the laps of our neighbors seven times the contempt they've hurled at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we will proclaim your praise. Mm. Psalms 80, this is Israel's plea for God's mercy. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might, come and save us. Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowl for them. You've made us an object of diversion to our neighbors and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. You transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Its branches reached as far as the sea, its shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it and insects 
from the fields feed on it. Return us, God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine. The root your right hand is planted. The sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down. It is burned with fire. At your rebuke, your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself, Israel. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Mm, so good, so good, so good. <laughs> oh, goodness. I really enjoyed this. I really, I always enjoy this. <laughs> I always enjoy it. So, you know, it's like, it's in those times when God seems farthest from us that we must seek him until we find him. Like he's there. It's like, okay, what is, what sin? Like we have to do a, an examination of self, you know, and let's be honest, revival starts with self. Okay. A lot of times we miss that. And, you know, I know it's kind of, you know, we say, oh, well, it's revival time. We're having a revival at this church, revival at that church, which is, is the case. We do mark certain events and things like that in the church. Um, but it's not like just a one time, oh, on this week or, you know, like kind of like vacation Bible school or we're having revival this week. Revival starts with self and revival and restoration for God. It's not just a one and done. This is the heart stance and the posture that God seeks. It's a, a move beyond a movement, a regular movement, right? God desires a revival to restore his people back unto himself. We must cry out and seek God, meditate on his word, his goodness. Remember, it's from days long ago, from times long ago, the days of old, those worship songs. You know, you remember when you're little, those songs, oh, they have so much more meaning now, right? Not just words or a tune that, you know, you can kind of, you know, you're like worshiping to. It means so much more to your spirit. The words have come alive. Remembering his promises, remembering God's promises. You know, surprise blessings come from wrestling with God. That wrestling is when you hold on and you don't let go. Like, I will, I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go until you bless me. I'm going to tell you, we have to get honest about our weaknesses and failures. Even as God's people, he gives us grace, right? We have to realize that it's God's strength and it's nothing of our own, okay? Nothing of our own. We cannot boast in anything. And we're to learn, right? Not just for us. You guys, it's not even about us. It is not even about us, but it's for the next generation. We are someone's ancestors. I am the ancestor. Like when you really like literally think about that, we're someone's ancestors. It's not about us. We have to pay attention to the signs and the patterns the things of long ago and what God is currently doing. I'm sure you found yourself even in the scriptures through our time reading and find yourself, your current situation and God and the Holy spirit, the ministry of the Holy spirit is so amazing in that way. How his word comes, truly comes alive. We have to acknowledge our sin and you know, give it to God, appeal to him to give us the grace to help us through, to redeem us. Like he said, I had to remember they're, they're only humans, they're only flesh, right? 
He knows that. But what is our heart? Who do we call on, right? In those times. Others are watching. It's for his name. It's for his glory. Our life should reveal God, should glorify God. Sometimes we are the only Bible that people get to experience. We have to show God to others. And let me tell you, when those sins go unchecked, right? As we see when the wrath of God <laughs> comes for who you call on when the correction, when God is correcting you through his wrath, who you call on? We would pray, you know, oh, pray the Lord, you help me. Huh? This is God, baby. So let's correct this, you know what I mean? Through obedience a heart of surrender, fully surrendered and submitted to God. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Let me tell you, even like, as we saw, we read, like God granted the demands, like the cravings of the food that they had in the wilderness, like God granted the demands. But y'all, they died in the midst of the satisfaction. Oh my goodness, they died in the midst of it. See, I think about God and his sovereignty. Like sometimes, let's just be honest. <laughs> we better off not getting what we want. Okay? Eyes of y'all be, you know, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. It'll do you in. It will do you in. You think that's what you want? Oh, I'll rain down. You got to eat the bread of angels. Man, I'm from heaven. He opened the heavens. What? Let me tell you the beauty in that. He, the bread of life, Jesus himself, provided the word will never hunger and thirst anymore. Almost like a foreshadow that, that, no, 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 this right here, the bread of life. What's your next move, you guys? We launching into the deep. Have you truly counted the cost? living a life pleasing to him a life fully transformed for the kingdom of god it is at hand continue to abide in him worship him praise the lord in spirit and in truth he is truly worthy to be praised continue in your secret place offer that incense of praise up to the lord god's Please understand, he is listening. We are his playlist. Until tomorrow, stay blessed.